All right, today's taping session is for the AC joint. Now, what I'm doing today is using some kinesio tape, and the way I tape AC joints is to stabilize the collarbone, of course, but also to unload the entire shoulder. Because when you have an AC joint problem, remember the AC joint is collarbone to a chromium. So if this is your chromium, this is your collarbone, it's that joint in between. When you get either a sprain, like a rupture, where that collarbone has lifted up because the ligament's been damaged, maybe they've taken a blow to the shoulder and it's lifted up, or they've got some inflammation from overuse, perhaps it's a weight lift to the shoulder from too much bench press, maybe it's a sporting injury. Regardless, if you unload the shoulder, so meaning if you lift up that shoulder with tape to take the weight off the AC joint, because remember, if this shoulder's hanging down, it's dragging on the ligament. So there's a lot of load on there. If you take the weight off, it's so relieving and it helps settle it down. So because that person can't hold their shoulder up like that all the time, because it's just impossible, if I can use tape to do that, that will give them some relief and it'll give you a better chance for it to settle. Um, the other thing we've got to try and do is actually, if that collarbone is sitting up, we need to pull it down. So if it is one of those collarbones that is ruptured, as in the AC joint is ruptured and it's come up, we need to try and stabilize it down a little bit, which will again, keep it in a nicer position for mechanical wise so they can do what they're doing during the day. But also it takes some of the pain away because the stretch on it is less, the mechanical load is better, and then they can also work on all their scapular work to try and help sort it out over time. So I'm gonna show you this KT taping. Now, I use KT tape because one, I want a sort of a spring suspension. I don't want to use rigid tape with this. Um, it gives me a lot more to play with. What you've got to think about is perhaps unloading the shoulder first. So I tend to take three strips. Now, you, they look like a bit like an AFL player after this, with our shoulder all taped up. But I take three strips that are about from scapula to their deltoid. So you've got to sort of measure that out. And I just cut three pretty much the same to start with. With this one... Um, you definitely want to round the edges again because they're going to put on sort of clothes, tops, all that sort of stuff. If it's going to get knocked all the time, you don't want it coming off as soon as you put it on. So what I would do is round off the edges with this so there's less likely hood of things catching it and ripping off the tape. So get that prepped up. Now, what they need to be in is a position of elevation. So you think this a chromium needs to be elevated up, right? Because that's, think about it, that AC joint is the only physical bony attachment of the whole shoulder to the spine, okay? The rest is muscle suspension. So if I can unload that, I need to bring it upwards. Therefore, if you put your left arm under that for me, what I tend to get them doing is they need to put their shoulder, if they're in pain, they need to put their shoulder by cradling with their other arm in the position that they want to be in, if that makes sense. So usually it's an elevation, and then I sort of try to get them back into a position here where it's a little bit of retraction, because when I tape it up, of course it's going to drop again, but I want them sort of to be over-elevated and over-retracted to an extent to say, is that relieving? If you put all the weight into that arm, is that relieving? And that's a good position for them to sort of be in. That's where I'm going to tape them. And then so when they take that hand away, the tape kicks in, they should have enough suspension to give them the relief. So in that position there, what I'm gonna do is get a strip. I usually go for the back one first. So I'll go, this is personal preference. I'll go from the delta. Imagine where the delta is coming in. So you can see that sort of shadow line of her deltoid. So I usually come across it on the rear deltoid like that. Okay, so for over the attachment point, come in here and then that's zero percent. Then I want to crank up basically 75 to 100 percent. I want as much load in there as possible and I come back at least get onto that scapula. Once I've got it there then I can take the tension off and sometimes you might have too much tape there that sort of thing. Then you can just put it down make sure the hair is not in the way so don't pull the hair out. That attachment point doesn't have to be tension. That's untensioned at the attachment point, okay? So it's tension from there. They still don't let that go. So that's your first one. And then you do three of those. So think posterior, mid, and anterior of the deltoid. And then you're going in the opposite direction over the shoulder. So this one is your mid. 
straight over the front. And this is a, one of your major lifters. So that one needs to come up and over. You miss the AC joint a bit, over into that upper trap, okay? And then as far as you can to the edge of that scap, keep it down, and then again, zero there, all right? And then your last one, is your anterior and that anterior one is going to come up and then down the posterior or the back part of that scapula okay so this one here as I come on this angle so almost like a 45 on that angle there make sure you get it nice and flat and then come around the front of that delta now you're going to cross over the AC joint a little bit here so up into there and then anchor that back down it's almost like the middle angle of the scapula there. And then this part, again, zero there, okay? So all that should act like a nice suspension. So when she lets that go, then it's held up nicely, okay? And if you've got all the right angles, it'll actually sort of pull it back. When I don't need too much scapula, you know, taping, pulling them back in that position. I find some people don't like being pulled back all the time because it actually stretches that AC joint in the front. So if they've damaged that joint, they actually like it sort of being a little bit sort of mid or forward. And of course, you work on all your scapula serratus work and lower traffic to get them flat. You don't have to pull them back in that position, okay? So just be aware of that. This is more about suspending that whole humerus up and, and that acromion and lifting it up to offload or offset that AC joint. So that's your suspension. That takes off the load. Now, what I want to do, if that's just an inflammatory one, that's maybe all you need to do. If you've got a ruptured one, then what I'd do is add one to two strips. I usually go two because I usually overlap the second one to try and as much as you can give a mechanical force or stabilization force to the end of that clavicle. Now, you've just got to be careful that you don't pull on any skin with this one because you can try too hard and it starts pulling too much on the skin and you can cause like little rashes or even removal of some skin. So don't get overzealous with this one. Just try and aim to have a little bit of sort of downward, backward force pressure on this. So what I would do is come from the front. Imagine where that, you follow the line of that collarbone. Imagine where that AC joint is. You don't want to be over top of it. You want to be a little bit on the sort of medial side of that collarbone and just come sort of straight in the front, a little bit on the pec, nothing major there. You just need an anchor point before the AC joint, okay? And then when you're coming over that collarbone, you think, okay, where's that collarbone in line with the scapula? And what I would do is once I get to that collarbone, then put a bit of pressure on as you push, okay? So I'm pushing that clavicle almost posteriorly, holding the acromion, okay with that? Mm -hmm. And then 100% here, down onto that, okay? So there's a backward, downward pressure, if you like, onto that clavicle there. There's the first one, all right? And that one will take up a bit of the skin slack, and then you can add on, because you've already got this sort of tent, source nice and firm now, you can add on a second one and just overlay it. If they find that's a, it's okay, let's see what the second one's like. And you may just go either, like if you've missed time, you might want to go either medial or lateral, depending on where you've put the first one. Same drill. Depending on how tender they are, just nudge it back a little bit, pull on it, and then you might go on a bit of a different angle at the back, maybe a little bit more sort of towards the diagonal, and add it there. And that'll just give them that sort of comfort there, if you like. Almost like think of, if that ligament's been damaged, you're supporting that ligament, you're trying to keep it in place, just like you do a knee ligament taping or an ankle ligament taping to try and support that ligament, you're doing the same sort of concept here. And that will hopefully help the symptoms settle so they can get less pain, it starts healing up faster, and they can do their strengthening work, which is so crucial for these AC joints. That's it, see you next time.